We are at the uh, Wyoming Historic Governor's Mansion, which was built in the early 1900s. The governors have lived here until the 1970s when the new mansion was built. And uh, Nellie T Taylor Ross lived here from 1923 until 1927. Nellie Taylor Ross is really quite famous in Wyoming and should be nationally, of course. Uh, first claim to fame was uh, she was the first woman to serve as a governor of a state in the country. And after that, she um, then went on to become director of the United States Mint. Nellie Taylor was born in uh, St. Joseph's, Missouri, grew up in a very f uh, poor family in Missouri. And then um, later on, she moved to Omaha, Nebraska to take training in how to be a kindergarten teacher. And so she, she did teach kindergarten for a very short time. And she went down to Tennessee to see some relatives. And on that trip down to Tennessee, she met William Bradford Ross, a young attorney who, who lived there. Nellie and Will married in Omaha in 1902, and after the marriage, they, they moved to Cheyenne. Now, Will uh, was fascinated by politics, and so that was the course he decided to take. He became prosecuting attorney here in Cheyenne. He ran for governor in 1918, lost in the primary, but then he ran again in 1922, and he was, uh, as a Democrat, elected governor in a Republican state. Will did not have a long tenure as governor, unfortunately. He is over in Laramie in late September 1923 giving a talk about the importance of a severance tax, and he becomes ill. At first it doesn't seem that serious, but then it becomes uh, apparently an acute, uh, an acute case of appendicitis. And so they perform surgery, and uh, things go from bad to worse. And about 10 days after that speech, October 2nd, is uh, when he passes away. Since he died about a month before the next general election, the, the rule was that uh, there would have to, uh, somebody would have to run and win uh, in the general election to serve out uh, his last two years in his term. So both parties, Democrat and Republican, had to select a candidate. The uh, Republicans selected a man named Eugene Sullivan, who was a mayor of Basin. He was Speaker of the House for a term. He also was an attorney in Casper with some oil interests. And so he was going to run for the Republicans. And then the Democratic uh, Party thought that Nellie Taylor Ross would be a good candidate. One, that she had been very close to her husband and she had helped him write his speeches. She had been very engaged with him and the issues when he was governor. And there probably was no other Democrat they thought could uh, put up a, a good uh, fight against Mr. Sullivan. So they asked Nellie and she was um, at first a little unsure she talked to her brother, George, uh, to get his advice. And one thing that George said was that Nellie, apparently, out of this, uh, she did appear to be uh, quite ambitious. That might not have come out before when she was uh, a mother and a, and a wife for 20 years or so. So she did agree that she would run to fill out her husband's last two years. Wyoming does have a long history of um, uh, granting women various rights and having various firsts for Wyoming. The first territory to grant women the right to vote in 1869, the first state to grant women the right to vote in, in 1890. In 1920, just a few years before Nellie ran for governor, there was an all-female town council in Jackson, and they made an effort to make some changes in that community. Um, and so there were many opportunities for women to, to vote, to get involved, and to serve in, in an office if they so desired. When you talk to Nellie, she would say the most important role for a woman is as a wife and a mother. And so she often mentioned that. But she also thought it was um, important for everybody, women, men, whomever, to be uh, uh, involved as citizens. When she ran, she said that because there were only like three weeks before the election and because she was in mourning, that she was not going to go around and campaign. She was not going to do that. And so she stayed here and uh, reporters would come to her 
And um, they usually would ask her about what she thought about the major issues in Wyoming. They would ask her questions about, oh, do you bake bread? Or, or um, could we get a picture of you sweeping the floor here in the governor's mansion? And so that was the tenor of the campaign on Nellie's part. She was even called by a, uh, a moving picture company who wanted to come to the mansion and uh, take a, a movie of her baking bread and sweeping the floor. And Nellie said, no, you better stay where you are. That would not be worth your while to come here. Well, she ran for governor, and in fact, she received, uh, she won by more than 8,000 votes. And so that was really amazing. She received more votes that year than anybody else who was running in a statewide office. <laughs> When uh, Nellie agreed to run, she said one reason she wanted to run was because she wanted to carry on what her husband had started. And you could have called him a progressive Democrat at the time. But she had her own ideas as well once, once she became governor. And so one thing that she wanted to do, there had just been a horrible mine disaster near Kemmer. A uh, hundred of the miners died in, in a mine explosion. And so she wanted uh, a tougher mine safety laws passed. She wanted uh, better protection for the banks. This was a very trying time in Wyoming history. Uh, Wyoming in the 1920s, 1920s was in a depression. Banks were failing right and left. Uh, people were leaving the state who were trying to homestead here in Wyoming. And so she wanted to protect the banks, and because of the hard times in Wyoming at the time, she wanted to make sure that uh, the government's money, the state's money, was well spent. And so she wanted to make sure that the uh, budget was spent on the most important things. Nellie's greatest impact as governor was more what she did out of state. She was, tr she was of course, asked to uh, travel the country and give talks, being the first woman governor. And so really what she was most noted for at the time was really promoting the state across the country. She writes to her son Ambrose in May 1925, I'm making this discovery that no man governor has the demands made upon him that are made of me. That's because I am the first woman governor. There is no end to the interviews. I must be nice to everybody. I am sure many people in the state and from outside come in to see me just to see what kind of a looking person I am. And they write me from everywhere wanting me to come to make addresses and I can't send a letter to be read. Many such requests I cannot ignore. Now I have before me an, an address to the Stock Growers Convention at Douglas, another to about 2,000 Shriners who are going through Cheyenne. No doubt, too, I'll have to make one at Sheridan. And now a message comes from Governor Harrier asking me to respond to the address of welcome to the governor of Maine at the governor's conference. Conference. I'm afraid to do it, and yet I can't refuse, so I don't want them to think I can't. She served the last two years of her husband's term, and then she ran for re-election, of course, in 1926. And she lost that election. It was a very close election. Uh, but she lost by a little bit more than 1,300 votes. One reason that she may have lost in 1927 is because there were Republican women who were questioning what she had ever done for women. Um, she was able to appoint more than 170 uh, people to places in Wyoming state government, and she only appointed five to women. Now, reason for that is that many of the others were mining inspectors and game wardens, and, um, and so there wasn't much, uh, many of these that could have gone to women in Nellie's view, I'm sure. And so that was used against her in the election that what had she done for women? And why should we reelect her as a woman when um, she hadn't done much for her own gender? Because she had uh, garnered some fame as the first woman governor, uh, she joined the Chautauqua circuit, and she traveled the country, and she um, gave a speech about uh, her time as the first woman governor. And so this is one 
uh, paragraph that, that she would say in uh, the early part of her speech. It had created some excitement in Wyoming when a woman's bonnet was thrown in the arena for the office of governor. There were those who ex exclaimed with amazement that a mere woman should have the temerity to offer herself for so important a position. Leaders of the opposite party even sent emissaries to try by subtle methods to dissuade me, and at once they launched and and once they launched the slogan that a governor's office was no place for a woman. Nellie, after the Chautauqua circuit, she did become involved in national politics. She became a vice chair of the uh, National Democratic Committee, and she was in, involved in the side with uh, women and what they were doing in politics. So she was quite active nationally. And when uh, Franklin Roosevelt was running for president in 1932, Nellie became active in that campaign. After Roosevelt became president, Nellie had hoped to get an office in his administration. In fact, she was hoping to become Secretary of the Interior, to become the first woman cabinet member. Unfortunately for Nellie, that went to Francis Perkins, who, whom uh, he selected as the, uh, as the uh, Secretary of Labor. And so Nellie did not succeed in becoming a cabinet member, but Roosevelt did appoint her as the first woman director of the U.S. Mint. <laughs> that while directing the coinage of money, that I had some magical power by which I could direct the flow of it into channels of trade far and wide. Our hope, however, of revival of business and the revival of our happiness lies in the broad heroic policies that President Roosevelt is sponsoring and that happily are now sized being converted into governmental action. Nellie did serve in that capacity for 20 years, from 1933 until 1943, and then she finally retired when she was in her 70s, early 70s. She was you know, nearly 50 when her husband died, and so for her to have the career she did um, from 1925 until 1953 is really quite amazing. Nellie is very well known in Wyoming, and there is a Legacy here for what Nellie did, as well as for many of the other women's firsts that Wyoming has. And so because of Nellie, I think it's pretty clear that Wyoming, for many years, was a leader in uh, women and their rights, and even somewhat in politics.